Welcome to Boots in Baltimore. I'm Leanne Blanchard. I'm here with Tarina Taylor, owner of The Payments Connoisseur. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Leanne. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you coming. So what? So The Payments Connoisseur, that implies some expertise, which I do not have. So what are all the things a payment processing system involves? Um, okay, so we have with a payment processing system, you I sell merchant accounts. That's pretty much the, the thing that I sell. So you're going to need a merchant account. If you do need any kind of equipment, you're going to need a piece of equipment that you use to process the, the credit card. The payment processor in the back end, you're going to need a, pay, a person, to, business, or system to process the payments in the back end. The payment gateway to connect your business to the payment processor. And then you're going to need security and compliance measures, which includes everything that you need to have a secure system so you can, you know, eliminate a lot of fraud because that's what's going on now online, especially for online businesses. So much fraud going on, you're going to need to have definitely some security compliance measures. And you want to have a friendly user face because most people want to be able to know how to use the system. So you want to be able to have something that is easy to use, easy to adapt to. And then you want to have a good customer support in your back end. So if you have any issues, you have somebody to help you resolve those issues. Got it. Well, so as a connoisseur, you've probably worked with a lot of different brands, a lot of types and levels of systems, a lot of back end providers. So what should business owners be looking for or what should they avoid? Okay, so I, I did write this down and I want to just look at my notes. So I don't forget anything. Now, I, like I said, security and compliance is number one. You definitely want to have security measures in place. You don't want to have something that's unreliable and it's, it's going to get you, you know, started with any kind of fraud situations. And that's something that we have in place for when we do our consultations. There was so much fraud going on with people trying to uh, impersonate other people. So we had to do Zoom calls now because like we have to see the person's face and make sure the, that person is who they say they are. We would like to see some form of ID as well before we even get started because like I said, there's a lot of situations where people will impersonate other people. We want to make sure they're transparent, no hidden fees, no back in. Oh, this is this was this way and this is this because there's a lot of that going on as well. You think that you're going to pay this a certain amount from the get-go and then later on down the line, you're paying more than you should be. Um, also with contract terms, we don't do contracts, but if you do are in a contract, you want to make sure those contract terms are clear so you know what you're getting into for the time period that you are signed up in the contract. And again, customer support, that's the biggest number one thing for us. You want to make sure your customer support is top notch. I don't know if you just heard, but Stripe just announced that they had changed some things with their content creators as far as content creators is concerned. So they're cracking down on a lot of the situation with content creators because they are considered high risk businesses. So they want to have a lot of things up front that content creators are going to have to have when they sign up with Stripe, even though they're a competitor of mine. But we do, that's why we do what we do because the situations have been with Stripe and PayPal that people are just not satisfied with. And so I wanted to be able to provide something better. Things to avoid, like I said, hidden fees, any long term contracts. I don't believe that you should be tied up to one provider. If you want to change your mind and get something better or find something different, that should be something that you should be able to do. And poor security. Like I said, fraud is big. You want to have great security compliance. Well, thank you. That was <laughs> very comprehensive. So when I think of payment processing, I think of retail establishments and restaurants, online stores as well. But but what are some industries or clients that are kind of a surprise or, or might surprise me? Like, I wouldn't think that, that that industry or business would need a payment processor, but they really do. Yeah, well, healthcare, definitely. You know, when you go to the doctor's office and you pay in with a credit card, most of the time they're going to have something set up so they can accept payments. HSA cards, stuff like that. So they do need payment processing. Education, schools. I don't know if you have children, but online, you know, if they, you have to pay for their lunch or something, they have a system where you can go in and put your card in so they can have like a revolving credit for the school, you know, school lunch. So you can set it up on like a payment card and nonprofits, nonprofits accept donations online. So yes. most of the time they accept it through PayPal, but there are some fees um, that's taken away from the nonprofit with that. So um, it, to me, it's better for them to sign up to have a merchant account because more of that money can go to them as opposed to going to a credit card processor. Interesting. 
I hadn't hadn't thought about this. <laughs> You're right. Those are a surprise. But you know, everything's changed, right? Because when I when I call a plumber to my house, for instance, the plumber takes the payment. It's not, oh, we'll bill you later. No, no, no. Right now. Exactly. <laughs> I did service and I'm not leaving your house until you paid me. Yeah. Or they send invoices or something like that as well. So invoicing system is also part of the payment process. So that's also what we do. We do we do have um payment processing providers that provide invoicing, payment links, anything, payment gateways. We have everything. That's why I'm a connoisseur, because we do a lot of everything across the board, ACH payments. We have integrations with QuickBooks because a lot of business service providers do use QuickBooks. So it's something that we we have comprehensive across the board with all those systems. Well, that makes so much sense, actually. So how hard is it to set up or change a system once you already have one? It's pretty simple. Some of my clients have been dropped by Stripe. So that's pretty much how we got started. They was looking for something better. And I think I'm going to have more of the influx of clients coming in now because of the situation with Stripe. A lot of people just don't understand and they'd rather, you know, shift to something a little bit better. Hopefully that would be a good educational point for me. But it's easy. Once you have your system, once you get your information set in with us, because we do go, go through an underwriting process. So if you have your, your you know, your ID, your, your paperwork for your business, your business bank account set up, if you have all of that in play, we usually get you approved in 48 hours or less. And the integration process is easy, a quick, maybe an hour, a couple hours tops, if it's, if that's the case, just to set it up with your systems, because we pretty much integrate with 99% of software. So if you have any software that you use, we, we usually um, can integrate with them. Excellent. So if I just have like a WordPress website, yep. it's easy to put it together or a Squarespace yep. website. Easy. Yep. easy. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So what is your opinion of the shifting transaction fees to the payer instead of the business? Like I've seen a lot when when I'm trying to pay by card, they'll give, they'll say, well, if you're going to pay by ACH payment, it's this much. But if you're paying by credit card, it's this much. So what do you think about that trend? It's all about reducing the fees for the business owner. A lot of businesses feel that we we call it a cash discount. So so for instance, a cash discount is when if a business if a, a person a customer a client wants to pay cash, they pretty much are getting a discount because they're paying cash. So the fee will be usually a flat rate fee. It won't be any other fees involved because you're not processing a credit card. When they do, when you do want to process with a credit card, if that's your choice, then that's when the fee is added on to you as the consumer because you had the option to pay in cash, especially with, you know, an in-person business. A surcharge is when they actually include the price of the processing fee into the price of whatever they're selling the product. So you might see you buy, I don't know, I can't think of anything specific, but you, you buy, say some lip gloss and they've already included in the processing, in the actual fee of the product the process of, you know, pricing a card as well. So it's it's two different ways that you can do it. Like I said, it's either the cash discount and they should really have that clear and in place up front inside the business so you'll be able to read and see what the, their methods are so you'll know that you are being the one who's charged the, the fee on the credit card. Yeah, because like driving by the gas station, you see, oh, the cash price is this, the credit price is this. But sometimes as you're shopping, say shopping online, you know, you go through, you pick out all your stuff, you get to the cart and then you're like, wait, what? Right, right. All right. these extra fees. Well, uh, you end up, you also seem like if you go get some Chinese food or something, like they want you to have over a certain amount of money before you can use a credit card. Like if you have under $10, they're going to want you to pay in cash because the processing fees are going to eat into their, into their profit if you're processing, you know, under $10 for a car. It just really doesn't make sense for the business. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why they'll have labeled if you process in over, you know, under $10 and you're going to have to use cash. It just makes sense for the business. So are all processing fees some sort of flat minimum plus a percentage or? It depends. It depends with our business week usually like to charge an interchange plus model. So interchange is what the credit card networks charge. That's Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express. Their charging, their rates are usually between 1.6 to 1.8%. And then up the plus is the actual payment process processor that we use. And that's a very small amount. It's usually like a 0.4% that they add on to the, the, the interchange. So that's why we call it inter interchange plus model. 
But our job, our goal is to save you as much money as possible in fees because we don't want to be charging you a whole bunch of fees. That's what kind of sets us apart. We want to, you know, minimize the fee. Excellent. Well, so what are some other trends that you're seeing? Well, just wondering, waking up to the Stripe situation, that was the, the biggest trend right now. But a lot of people are doing ACH payments. Like you said, with the ACH is usually a little cheaper when you go with ACH, they'll reduce some of those fees. And we do, we have just added on an ACH partner um, called um, Paya. So they strictly do ACH. And then we have another integration with Bill or Jeannie and they integrate with QuickBooks because like I said, a lot of service providers do use QuickBooks. And there's a quick integration, like I said, is usually hours or less. And it's really great for the business owner to stay organized with their backend systems and be able to send out invoicing and have all those extra things that you have that QuickBooks doesn't have. We have Biller Genie that actually has some added on additions, right? Um, inexpensive, it's like $25 a month that you can add on. And it really streamlines your systems. Um, a lot of automation tools that QuickBooks doesn't have. And that's great. That's cool. I love it. Well, how did you get started in this industry? I think it was 2022, 2021. It was the end of 2021 when I started learning about payment processing. Me and my mom, we owned a salon. So you around that time, you know, everybody was kind of coming, trickling back into work, you know, from the um, pandemic. And a lot of people wanted contactless payments. And usually my business, yeah, is a cash business. Most people pay in cash, but I wanted, you know, options of using payment processing. I was using Square. And I was noticing some different variations in fees. So if a person had their card present in their hand and I swiped it on my little square reader, the fees would be lower as opposed to if I stored somebody's card in my system. If I stored their card in my system and then I, you know, use that card, the fees would be higher. So I'm like, hmm, what, what's that about, right? So it's because of the risk involved. So if a, per, a person has a card present, that means they actually handed you their card and there's usually a lower risk of chargebacks because you handed me the card. You said it was okay for me to charge the card. But if the person's card is stored in my system, I could charge their card with whenever I want, you know, even without their knowledge because their card is stored in my system. So the risk of that is higher because if I did happen to, if I was a dishonest person and I charged their card and they want, wanted a chargeback, that's why the fees are higher. So just learning about that, I was like, I just need to educate myself a little bit more. And once I started educating myself and learning more about it, it just was an interesting business for me. And I wanted to be able to take that knowledge to my community. So that's something that I got into. Yeah, it's a really cool niche. And, and like we were saying earlier, almost everybody needs it. Everybody needs it. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get paid, you're going to need some type of payment. I mean, and thinking about it, because they say cash is king, but a lot of people now are carrying less cash. People don't want to yeah. have cash on them, especially in Baltimore City, because you know what we're dealing with. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, even the buses don't take cash. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, vending machines don't take cash a lot no more than newer ones. You know, you got to swipe a card for a vending machine. So, yep. That's the way it is. So cash isn't king. Cash is obsolete. And, and we need to say obsolete. I wouldn't say obsolete. <laughs> like, you know, it's it, cards are more, especially too, because you do have that, you know, that that high risk thing where if you do have a situation where you do have a, you order something and you do want a refund, you can dispute it. But with right. cash, you know, you spend it, it's gone. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, so why locate here in Baltimore? That's where I'm from. I've been born and raised in Baltimore City. Uh, that's what my, <laughs> my business is. That's, that's just, where else, right? Where else? It make, it, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> well, I appreciate what you say about you know bringing it to the community and helping people figure it out because I think it's it's one of those things that business owners don't want to spend a lot of time on because uh -uh. it's absolutely not their wheelhouse and they just want something that works and something that's consistent and something that you know, they can predict for, they know how much it's going to be. And so, yes, they really do need to be calling you because you are the connoisseur. I just think, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, like you said, a lot of people don't put a lot of focus on it until something happens and then they want to start learning. Like myself, like my, myself did, you, you want to learn about it beforehand, but it's so much stuff as a business owner that we have to learn because it's just pretty much a, you know, as you go along, you learn it. That's an entrepreneur for you. How they say you you falling and you just learning on the way down how to not hit the ground. 
That's how <laughs> Absolutely. It yeah. Well, thank you again so much. This has been a real education. Thank you. I'm glad I got to educate you. And if you need any help with any payment processing systems, I hear. If you know anybody that needs help, please send them my way. How should people contact you? On um, my website, terenataylor.com, is just my name, pretty simple. And you can book a consultation there. I have resources there that you can learn about payment processing as a whole, merchant services as a whole. I have a little free ebook if you want to get it and check it out before you make a consultation if there's any questions you have beforehand. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. This has been Leanne Blanchard for Boots in Baltimore. Please stay tuned for more episodes and more interviews with wonderful business owners like Tarina.